As important as showing up and being present for your group is, your job as a small group leader doesn't stop there. In ancient times, officials would carve roses into the ceilings of political conference areas and would designate the conversations in those rooms as sub rosa, which meant under the rose. It was a way of saying that what happens in this room stays in this room. The idea was meant to encourage open conversation because the space could be seen as a safe one. And after time passed, the roses came to symbolize this safe space so effectively that they were even carved into the interior of confessional booths where people came to talk to priests. To be sub rosa meant that you could be open and honest. It meant that you could trust the people you were talking to. And this needs to be true of your small group too. Part of your job as a small group leader is to give kids and teenagers a safe place to speak freely, process their doubts, wrestle with questions, and talk about their issues and ideas. Creating a safe place isn't something that happens overnight. It takes time for kids and teenagers to learn how to trust you and the other group members. Trust is an investment. It's something that we have to mutually earn. And while we can't promise that it'll happen immediately, we can promise that these three strategies will help to guide you towards it. First, lead the group. Now that may sound like a given, seeing as you're the small group leader, but it's worth explaining. You are responsible for the dynamic and discussions in the group. You set the tone, you navigate the current, and that's especially true when it comes to tension. Tension is inevitable. And while you may feel the temptation to lean away from it, the truth is that tension isn't a bad thing. It's natural, and it's meant to be engaged with. So leverage the tension, lean into it, and teach your few to learn from it. Tension is a result of our differences, and our differences are just opportunities to demonstrate unconditional love. If your group is a safe place for differences and tensions to be expressed and navigated, then your few will learn how to show up for other people. They'll learn how powerful it is to accept others and to be accepted by them. So lean into those tensions. In other words, lead the group. Second, respect the process. Like we said before, establishing that your group is a safe place isn't something that happens overnight. You're contending with different personalities, different temperaments, different backgrounds, and different beliefs that fall on a wide spectrum. And if you got into this thing because you wanted to change people, then you're going to end up exhausted and even discouraged. The truth is that it isn't up to us to change people. We aren't God, we aren't the Holy Spirit. God is the one who changes us. The Holy Spirit is the one who refines us. We can't change everyone. We can't even change anyone, but we can love a few. The Bible doesn't say to change your neighbor as yourself. It says to love your neighbor. And love is a process. Change is a process. God's work in your few is a process, so respect the process. And third, guard the heart. Now, it may feel like I'm about to contradict the first point, but the unfortunate truth is that the work of creating a safe place for your group may require you to break their trust. While we can all hope for the best where our few are concerned, the truth is that the kids and teenagers in our groups are hurting. They're going through things that we may not be fully equipped to understand or even deal with. And when kids are experiencing one of the three hurts, being hurt, hurting others, or hurting themselves, it's essential to guard their heart at the expense of breaking their confidence. Our church has policies in place to help direct us when these kinds of things happen. And sometimes, trust has to be broken in order to protect our kids. It isn't an easy decision to make, but it's a necessary one. Leading your group takes work. Respecting the process takes time. Guarding the heart takes effort. But when you create a safe place inside of your group, you give your few opportunities to grow and learn. They deserve the chance to sit in a space where they're accepted, where their ideas are safe, and where honesty is valued. So model those things for your few. Celebrate everyone equally. Shut down gossip. If individual issues arise, address them privately, and then give your few the chance to do those things themselves. The truth is that if your few can't be their Monday through Saturday selves when they're with you in group, they'll have a hard time applying their faith in everyday situations. If they can't share their doubts in community, they'll dwell on them privately. If they can't ask you their questions, they're going to ask someone else. And if they don't admit their struggles to someone, 
they'll never experience the power of bringing things to light in a way that facilitates freedom and forgiveness. So create a safe place for your few and give them the gift of a space where they can be themselves and expect acceptance, honesty, protection, and love.